ready to start yeah all right welcome to the session today we're talking about analogizing and biomimicry i'll just take you through the definition of these two terms they are not that complex analogizing is just basically looking at how one thing is similar to the other or how they are different so it's a comparison and um you know with design thinking we have we solve problems and we have methods of reasoning and one of uh, that is abductive reasoning and analogizing is or analogy is one of the methods of thinking in an abductive way so you basically look at what is happening or look at a specimen or something and you make a hypothesis or a conclusion about another thing so if i look at this bottle and i say this bottle if it falls like this it will go deeply into water it means if i create another thing that looks like this bottle it will go deeply into water when i drop it so that's analogy basically so if you look at this picture basically the person the designer looked at this and built this so you'd be like how can i build a structure that looks like this from nature biomimicry on the other hand is just looking up to nature for inspiration. So you look at what happens in nature and you think about what you can model from what occurs in nature and design it into your uh, man-made component. So you look at natural components and you design it into man-made components. So back again to, if you look at this picture, this is the Shakensen yeah. train in Japan. Is it Japan? Yeah, and the story behind this train is they designed a bullet train that was supposed to come out of uh, the tunnel. So when it comes out of the tunnel, they realized that it made a lot of a sharp noise or a loud noise that people were uh, complaining about it. So they look up to the kingfisher and they realize that the kingfisher dives deep into the water with the beak. So when it dives deep into the water with the beak, it doesn't make any sound. So they try to remodel the train using the beak of a kingfisher such that when it comes out of the tunnel, there is no noise. So that's biomimicry right there. So basically looking at what occurs in nature and modeling it into designing products that uh, resemble those things. Now, um, like I said, analogy is a very useful uh, problem solving tool falls under abductive reasoning. Um, that was a long story. Let's look at analogizing in a different way. Um, in science, mostly people use analogy to explain the, uh, certain things in science. So um, you all heard about Leonardo da Vinci when he was looking at um, making an object that could fly with people or making an airplane. That time he wasn't calling it an, an airplane, but he looked up to the birds and looked at the structure of the birds, and he was basically drawing something that looks like. So he was like, if I'm able to make something that looks like the bird or has the capabilities of a bird, then I'll be able to create something that can fly humans. And that's analogy. Now, you can also use it as a means of invention. So you look up to this. You'd be like, okay, this thing can stick on my clothes. What property does it have? And what can I invent out of this thing to help people? Okay. And um, towards the end of the session, you'll actually be using this to come up with some useful ideas that could help. Okay. <clears throat> then you can also use analogy in art or in generating ideas. So if you want to design a model. So for this presentation, we'll be using the Arabian Eye Hospital, the, um, the model that they use in that high, eye hospital, and glowing. I'll tell you what glowing is when we go um, um, into the presentation. So you can use analogies to generate ideas. You can use analogy for arts. So you basically look at, um, if I want to make a piece of sculpture or something that looks like a laptop, so you basically look uh, at the laptop and you make a sculpture that looks like it has analogy. Then, analogy can also be a metaphor, you know, describing something that is like this one or something like that is like a human, you know. So you make analogy from a metaphor or a metaphor from analogy. 
you can also use another gene, IGA. So when you want to make very, some very strong points um, in a debate or in an argument, you can always use another gene. It's, it's easier for you to use a simpler thing that someone can understand than use a very complex thing. Um, I'll give an example of a hospital. So <clears throat> there was this hospital, I can't remember the name, that the workers were not performing well because they had some conflict. So the management of the hospital basically, in order to explain how they are going to work more efficiently, the, the management of the hospital explained how the system of the body works. It's like the hospital runs like the human system. So the arm and the brain and the chest and everything, they work together in order for the body to function. And that's analogy. So when you explain things like that, it makes it more simple for people to understand. Um, I love this one, children analogizing. So when we were kids, you probably take uh, a stick and use it as an analogy for a motorbike. So you put a stick and you run. So the, the place you're holding it is your trotting. The, the head of the of the stick is probably the head lamp of the bike, and the tail is the other leg of the bike. So as children, we make a lot of analogies to things um, that we don't understand. So you just pick up anything and you be like, oh, this is my drum. So because I can turn this thing and put it under, it's my drum, and that's analogy, basically. Now let's look at comparisons. Um, as I said, we'll be using the Aravind uh, Eye Hospital System um, as the model for this presentation. So Aravind, what they basically do is do eye surgery and other eye treatments in India. But they realize that they could model uh, their system on the McDonald's model. We all know McDonald's, they make burgers. If you eat McDonald's here and you travel to the USA or to any other country, it's the same McDonald's. It tastes the same way, the burgers are the same, their chips are the same. And you begin to wonder why all of these things are the same everywhere you go. So Aravin thought that by modeling um, their, their healthcare system after McDonald's, they were able to perform eye surgeries that are the same across all their hospital systems. So they have different hospitals in India that does the same thing in the exact same way. And that's pretty cool, because you come up with an idea and you're trying to look at a model that will be more efficient, or a model that will enable you to easily scale your idea. And you look up to existing model and see how you can use analogy to, to remodel your, your your own um, system after that. And that's exactly what um, Aravind did. But <coughs> you can see that it's really different because this is an eye hospital and that is a food company. So there's no clear link, but they were able to model how McDonald's does things and they stay the same across uh, the world. Now let's move to biomimicry. And I will look at Chloe, and this um, uh, Mercedes bionic, bionic heart. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, biomimicry is designing biological components into man made products. Mm -hmm. So, you look up to nature and you be like, okay, what is so specific about this fish that makes it work or that makes it swim in water really fast the way it does? Mm -hmm. Then you try to study that component and you put it into designing something that will help reduce foil and help time and increase the efficiency and the speed of the car. And that's what Mercedes done did with this car. They basically looked at that fish and modeled this, this car after it. This car was able to reduce 10% for use and increase the speed of the car that was previously not this model. Now, with Glowy, Glowy, they basically designed uh, transparent products that do not need electricity to go. So it's transparent during the day and it glows during the night. And that's pretty cool. And where does the inspiration come from? It comes from jellyfish. They realize that jellyfish has some specific bacteria in them that enable the jellyfish to glow 
in darkness. So when it's down under the water in the dark, the jellyfish is able to grow due to the bacteria that it has. So they have decided to re-engineer that bacteria and produce their own. And they are able to make these transparent products. This is how it looks during the day. Then at night, it's glowing. And it's able to shine and light places at night without electricity. So if you're thinking about the future and thinking about not being able to use electricity in order to light places or reducing um, dependency on other forms that or other means of generating electricity, then glow it is exactly looking at the, the exact same thing. So they're able to generate these things to light floors, to light um, the, the applications are way many. So you could use it in buildings, on your doors, or outside. It could be on that uh, water fountain uh, to light it during the night so we don't have to use electricity or any LEDs there. And I will take you, I, I will show a quick video or a short video <coughs> of some of the some of the inventions that nature has inspired and how they are trying to change the way we live. These days, inventors and engineers are still drawing inspiration from plants and animals in the wild. Mark Thompson has more. It's helping swimmers improve their times, planes to fly safer and faster, and influencing the shape of modern trains. Biomimicry is becoming increasingly popular. The technique provides sustainable solutions inspired by nature's own design. It hit the headlines at the 2008 Olympics. Swimmers there wearing high-tech outfits using such technology won 98% of the medals. The costumes were based on shark skin. Its surface is covered in microscopic teeth which are slip resistant, allowing water to slide over the animal. And the technology is also changing the airline industry. Denis Dirac is the head of research at Airbus. He too wants to use shark skin technology. We want to place these strips on our plane, which will help reduce the friction of the aircraft. It's exactly the same principle used by shark to help it go faster, consume less energy, and be a better predator. And it's not just sharks influencing Airbus. The upturned feathers at the tips of a step eagle's wing inspired the fuselages on Airbus A320 planes. It allows us to reduce our oil consumption by 4% for all our clients. So that's a reduction of millions of tons in CO2 emissions each year for a client company. Airbus isn't the only multinational company turning to biomimicry. A German company has taken cues from lizards' tongues to create this new robot. Its silicon head uses the same suction techniques to move objects. In recent years, around 150 startups across France have been set up to explore the technique. Today, this company is meeting with potential new clients. Glowy's designers believe they've come up with a potentially revolutionary design, a 100% ecological way of lighting made from luminescent organisms. It's not possible to see the light during the day. It's only visible in the dark. This is the source of their inspiration special bacteria present in jellyfish that light up in the dark. Glowy's researchers have cultivated their own bacteria and mixed it with water in plastic cases. The result is a substance that is transparent by day and luminous at night. It can be used in shop windows, the front of buildings, furniture, traffic signs, and all this natural light will reduce our energy consumption. The business is trying to help turn one of nature's oldest tricks into one of man's newest ones. Okay. Wow. That was inspiring, right? Yeah. Um, so, the application of biomimicry spans across, across uh, science, design thinking, and any product that you want to design, <laughs> you can always look up to nature for inspiration. Uh, to design better products that will really, really increase the efficiency of whatever you want to do. Um, now, we're going to do a short activity um, with, 
what I just shared with you, these plants. Now, if you stick it on your clothes, you realize it sticks perfectly. Now, I want you to, to identify the key features of the specimen that you have with you. Then, you come up with at least two ideas that you can mimic from that feature or from the specimen itself. Then you tell us what is the inspiration behind it. That's easy, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Now, there's also these plants that I didn't give you. But what happens with these plants is when you touch it, immediately you touch it with your hand, the leaves cover up. So the leaves are normally open, like flat like this. But when you touch it, they, up, they close up on themselves. So you could also think about what you can mimic from this plant and what you can make out of it. Right. What can you do? You could create a lighting system that when you tap, it just closes up or something. I don't know. <laughs> but you could come up with a lot of ideas from these specimens that could really change the way people live. So we're going to take, let me see. Five minutes or less. Yeah, like six minutes. Six minutes to come up with two ideas that will be inspired by that are inspired by the specimen that you have. Then you share with us your inspiration. Anyone? <laughs>